Hello Twin Cities Landlord, this is John Stiles with Bridge Realty, helping you maximize your property value. Today's video is a brief update of what's going on in the Minnesota apartment market. The information in this video is a summary of a webinar that I attended last week that was hosted by the Minnesota Real Estate Journal. You can watch the full webinar on their YouTube channel, and I'll link it below. But if you don't have a full hour and 15 minutes to go through the webinar, hopefully this short video will be a good summary of what you missed. I want to give a shout out to the presenters of the webinar who include Keith Collins from CBRE, Chris Sherman from Sherman Associates, Ted Bickle from Colliers, Brent Rogers from Saturday Properties, and the host of the webinar was Jeff Johnson from the Minnesota Real Estate Journal. So we're going to break up the topics into five sections, including sales volume, rent collection, leasing and renewals, operations, and development. So let's get into it. Number one, sales volume. According to the brokers on the webinar, most commercial deals have been shelved. Buyers are factoring in unknowns due to the pandemic. They are applying higher economic vacancy and no or low rent increases for the near future, which has a big impact on values. Sellers are not yet willing to give in to these adjustments, and therefore deal volume is nearly at a standstill while buyer and seller expectations are so far apart. For out-of-state investors, it is difficult to proceed with due diligence on their deals while travel restrictions are in place. Local investors have an advantage, but there are still challenges with limited showings. Sales volume is expected to be slow for several quarters, and this will only change when consumer confidence returns to the marketplace. Unless sellers are desperate or motivated, they may decide to wait until the economy stabilizes. Number two, rent collections. With record high unemployment and calls for rent strikes, there has been lots of fear about how much rent will be collected during the pandemic. In reality, according to the presenters on this webinar, rent collections have been good and in some cases higher than normal. One stat suggests that Minneapolis is fourth in the nation for collections. This is likely because of federal stimulus payments and increased unemployment benefits that are supporting residents. In some cases, owners and managers are helping residents apply for unemployment or providing other financial guidance during these difficult times. This seems to be working out well for both residents and investors. Number three, leasing and renewals. Leasing activity is still high as people continue to have housing needs. Wherever possible, methods have shifted to contactless showings and electronic lease signings. Now, many companies have already adopted these practices, but others had resisted, not for fear of technology, but because they place a high value on the human element of the leasing process. Now they have been forced to adapt and find other ways to personalize the rental experience. Lease renewals are strong as people are sheltering in place and staying longer. Number four, operations. Maintenance has been mostly limited to emergency items such as heating, cooling, water issues, as well as increased common area cleaning. Repair personnel are being equipped with personal protection equipment and gallons of hand sanitizer. Managers are doing their best to over communicate with residents so that non-emergency maintenance concerns can still be recorded and planned for the near future. Buildings with on-site offices and common area amenities have shut those down. Some residents have expressed frustration and requested rent reductions because of this. However, most people understand the unprecedented situation and are being patient. As managers look to reopen these spaces in the future, it will likely be phased in starting at 25% occupancy while encouraging six-foot social distancing. This will likely result in lasting changes to these spaces. Owners and managers will be looking to other industry leaders such as fitness centers and event facilities to guide them on next steps. Number five, development. While bankers are prioritizing SBA loans and cities are prioritizing pandemic response, development projects have taken a back seat. Some lenders have completely cut off funding for new development. Those that remain are requiring bigger reserve accounts and higher down payments. While these are new challenges, Developers that are well capitalized can take advantage of historically low interest rates that are still available. This can actually make their deals more viable. Aside from the pandemic, new construction was seeing some headwinds due to high construction prices and huge increases in real estate taxes. There is optimism that these may shift in favor of developers as a result of the pandemic's effect on the overall economy. As developers plan for a post-pandemic world, they are considering ways to provide more work from home options for residents. This might be through on-site office space or larger units that provide an office or den. For underwriting, the lease up schedule projections should add a couple of months in the near future, 
but not much. Looking forward a few years, the lease-up schedule will likely compress as new development fails to keep up with demand for housing. Now the situation will continue to develop as new information comes out about the virus and the government determines its best response. I'm convinced that multifamily continues to be one of the strongest asset classes in commercial real estate as it is rooted in the human need for housing. If you want to stay up to date on the multifamily market in Minnesota, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.